Alrighty guys, we're back filming another video. Now traditionally we've always cooked my own recipes. Today I thought it'd be something different. Uh, me and my wife saw this movie. It was uh, Julia and Julia about a girl who redid all of Julia Child's famous recipes. Coincidentally enough, I follow another YouTuber influencer, uh, the anti-chef who does the same thing, his channel being, or his series being Jamie and Julia. Now, you should check him out by the way, very good. Now I've kind of took my own spin on things. I want to do the same thing with my favorite chef, Maddie Matheson. I have two of his cookbooks. We're gonna to try to knock out all the recipes through this series. Uh, today we're gonna to start off with his Nashville hot chicken. Now, I think you'll find that this recipe is very intriguing, easy, and fun, and you'll see that it's actually kind of a little surprise at the end of how it tastes. It's delicious, and I'm excited to show you how he makes it. Uh, stick with us, we'll have fun, we'll figure it out these recipes, and it'll be interesting to see me, a professional chef, make somebody else's recipe. So stick by if you like the video. Uh, give us a like, subscribe, and share it, and we'll get started, all right? Oh, we making bomb ass food. Just one shot won't do. Not tonight, cause if I'm not hungover, then you know it isn't right. Okay, so to start off, Maddie Matheson's Nashville hot chicken, we're gonna start with his uh, flour mixture, the dredge. What we're gonna do is, uh, he says he wants 500 grams of all-purpose flour. And to that, we're going to add 25 G's of onion powder. We're gonna add three tablespoons of garlic powder. We're gonna do a fourth cup or 25 grams of the cayenne. This is gonna be spicy. It is hot chicken after all. And then we're gonna do the paprika, three tablespoons. And then to round everything out, which I think is a nice touch, we're gonna do two tablespoons of ground fennel. And then to that, we're gonna add just a little bit of salt and a couple grounds of fresh black pepper. That should be good. And we're gonna just kind of whisk this all together. It's gonna to change color. It's actually pretty crazy looking. But you wanna do this for a lot longer than you think you're going to, just with my experience of uh, doing fried chicken, because you wanna make sure that everything gets incorporated well. You want all the flavors to kind of collide together. Everything mixed together, get a nice color going. It's spicy, you can smell it, it's making me sneeze kind of. But here we go, you got a nice pink finish, which is pretty, pretty cool looking. I don't think I've ever seen a flower dredge so colorful. So, once we have that, what the actual first step for this is gonna be, is you wanna make a brine for your chicken. So we're using two whole chickens, as to Maddie's specifications, uh, two, three to four uh, pound chickens. So you're gonna break them down, I did this last night, you're gonna break them down, cut the spine out, take apart the thighs, the wings, separate those. All in all, you should have four breasts, four wings, four legs, and four thighs. And you're gonna put this in a mixture of brine. I'll give you the exact specifications here. It's a 10% brine. So out of all the water you have, you want, sorry, out of all the water you want, you want a 10% salt base to it. So to make the salt, or the 10% salt brine, you pour the water into the pan, you add three ounces, 100 grams of salt to the, one point, or 15 ounces of warm water. And then once you kind of heat that together, you put it over some ice, let it melt, and then you put your chicken in there, cover it, put it in the fridge overnight. Now, why we brine chicken is not only make the flavor kind of better, but it helps tenderize the meat and everything kind of just gets way better in comparison to just kind of doing chicken that way. What I like to do with my brine is usually I do like a butter, buttermilk and pickle juice brine. I find that to be fantastic, but this isn't my recipe today, this is Maddie's, and I'm sure it'll be just as delicious. So I'm just gonna get settled here. I gotta get a rack. We're going to now dredge all of our chicken. So just give me a moment, let me get set up. All right, so we took the chicken out of the brine. We laid it out here. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna pat everything dry. I wouldn't rinse, like some brines, you rinse them under the sink, don't do that. Maddie doesn't say to do it, so I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna follow his instructions to the T. Just pat everything dry. Get some more paper towels. Wear gloves too, this is raw chicken. You know, it's always better to be safe. And make sure you sanitize your workstations after you deal with raw poultry. Just for basic, you know, health, food, and safety. You don't want to be that guy that gets everybody sick at the party because you were lazy. Paper in the trash hole. 
and we're gonna start dredging. So I'll take my chicken, I'll put it in, flip it over once, and then I kind of scrunch it together like this. There's a spoon in here. And I kind of just scrunch it together like this. What that's gonna do is kind of give you that like flaky looking swirls on the chicken like you get from like KFC. That's how they get those designs. So put that down, throw this in, same thing. Just dredge it up, get that nice and coated. Beautiful. This is gonna be spicy because I can feel the heat through the gloves. Like when you know you touch peppers. I know that's, uh, maybe it's just me, but this is gonna be spicy. <laughs> and I'm like, I used to be really good with spice because I used to be like a two pack a day smoker. I know it's a terrible, disgusting habit. Uh, and I used to, you know, eat spicy food all the time because I think my mouth was destroyed from the cancer uh, and I couldn't taste much. Ever since I quit, me and spicy food, we just, we don't get along anymore. <laughs> like I still eat it and I still love it because I used to love it back when, but it, it just kills me. It really does. Alrighty, so we're gonna cut back because it's gonna take a little bit and uh, we'll go on to the next part after that. So bear with us as we continue to dredge this chicken. But look at that, it's beautiful, beautiful chicken. Alrighty, so we have dredged all of our chicken we got the pot of oil going. We want to heat this up till it reaches 325 degrees. Now, each part of the chicken cooks at different times. Smaller pieces, bigger pieces. So we're going to start with all the wings. The wings we're going to put in. We're going to put back into the dredge just to make sure all the wet spots are gone. And we're going to put in. Now, deep frying at home can be a very scary kind of experience. If you take it the right way, you'll be okay. So first of all, you wanna make sure your pot is you know, away from everything. And when you put stuff in, you wanna make sure it's nice and hot. Drip it in first to make sure it's good. If that feels like a good temp, I'm actually gonna raise it a little bit and drop away from you. If you drop away from you, you'll be fine. Drop away. And don't overcrowd the pot. We're gonna lower this a smidgen. If you overcrowd it, your chicken will become greasy. All right? So we're gonna let this go for nine minutes. Alrighty, so these have been in for about nine minutes. I'm not sure what happened here. We lost some of the dredge on some, but that's okay. Cooking is about just cooking, you know, things don't always go the way you want it to, but we have more chicken to fry, so it should probably be all right. As soon as they come out, just sprinkle it with a little salt and we're good to go. Now we have the next batch. It is the thighs. So grab all of your thighs and we're going to redredge like last time. These are going to take a little longer. These are a little thicker. All right. So don't be alarmed if it takes a while because you want to make sure your chicken's cooked through. Again, we're going to grab inserts and drop. Super easy. You're not going to get burned Then drop. And drop, lower the heat. And we're gonna let that go for, I think it's 12 minutes. All right, and we'll come back when that's cooked. Alrighty, the thighs are ready, and I have to say, they are beautiful. Like, actually, the dredge stayed on completely. They are frying to a, beyond a golden brown. This actually might be like in my top five best fried chicken I've made, and I have not. I've made a lot of fried chicken in my life, but my God, they are just beautiful. It's like perfect. Again, what we're gonna do now is we're going to just season these as they come out. Perfect. Alrighty, now we're gonna move on to the legs. <laughs> the legs. So we have our legs here. Again, we're gonna throw them in there. I've abandoned the gloves. We're here now. So the legs go in. I'm missing a leg. Oh, there it is. And again, we're just gonna redredge real quick. While this oil kind of comes back to temp. And we're gonna lower it. And again, put in and drop, just like that. It's nice and safe. Put in and drop. Should be perfect. In and drop. 
in and drop. Lower it a little bit. And again, this is gonna be another nine minute sesh. And then we'll come back once these are cooked, all right? So we have reached our cook time for the drumsticks. Again, they're just coming out better and better. They're beautiful. I mean, look at that. I dare you to go to KFC and try to get something like that. You're not gonna be able to. It is absolutely crispy, fantastic, and golden. So we're gonna pull these out, and then we are going to go ahead and season them like we have been. You wanna make sure you put this, I should have mentioned this earlier, but you should probably put this on a baking sheet with a cooling rack, just so any hot oil drips down and collects into there, instead of on your countertop, or you don't really want this sitting in more oil because that's how stuff becomes greasy. Um, but yeah, we have a couple more pieces of chicken. We're gonna, uh, it's the same deal. You've seen it once, you've seen it twice. We're going to uh, just dredge away from you in, lower the heat, and then we'll uh, come back when these are ready. These are going to be now the breasts. The breasts are big. I've actually cut them in half just because this was a very well endowed chicken. This was like the uh, Dolly Parton of chickens. They had huge breasts. So now that all the chicken is cooked, beautifully fried, we have to make the Nashville chicken sauce. So what we have here is five jalapeno, 10 scotch bonnet, which is a little bit more spicy than the jalapeno, and then a nice bird eye chili. I'm assuming the bird eye chili is coming from uh, Maddie's kind of uh, Vietnamese background of cooking because his mentor, Master Rang, is Vietnamese. So I'm assuming that's where the Thai bird eye chili is coming from. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of these peppers and we're going to put them in two cups of oil. And we're gonna let that kind of come up to 350 degrees. And then we have to let that steep for no more than, or no less than a half an hour. And then we blend it to make our sauce. So we're just gonna let that kind of do its thing and we'll come back when we're ready to go. Alrighty, so the peppers have now steeped for about a half hour, which is what we want according to Maddie's specifications. Uh, I can see where he's talking about. They're soft, they're gonna be easily blended. And that's why he wants to steep them for so long in the oil. So we're gonna move over to this side where I have my blender. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put all the peppers in. All right, we're gonna put them all in there. And then we're gonna fill this up to about halfway because we don't want this to overflow. Actually, the whole thing fits perfectly. You must be using a smaller blender. So put this here, put the cover on, and we are going to blend. Okay, as you see, the oil that we put in with the pepper, as we continue to agitate it, it's actually emulsifying. If you were to keep going, it would almost make like a mayo consistency. So we're gonna keep going just to get any little bits and bobs, and then we're gonna strain it. So I'm just gonna do another couple, five, like maybe five, six seconds. Okay, now that that is pretty good, we're gonna put it back into the pot we're gonna strain it. And the reason why we're straining it is just to get any like, you know, partic particulates out of there, like pepper skin, stuff like that. It's a nice consistency. Ooh, that has got some heat, buddy. This dish is not for the faint of heart. So as I put it in there, I'm kind of just kind of scraping the bottom of the sieve here. And what that's doing is it's kind of speeding the process a little bit. Russell would be here all day. Put the rest of it in there. Oh man, that is spicy. In a good way. It's actually not like, like I said earlier, I'm not great with spice, but I can handle this. That's not too bad. And I'm thinking the recipe, I had some green bird eye chili in there. Well, no, not true because we did have jalapeno as well. So I'm thinking that this coloration is probably fine. Now, make sure you always do this when you strain stuff out. Go ahead, hit the bottom of it. Because if you throw that out, it's just kind of a waste, and I hate food waste. It makes sense. This recipe makes sense, but that's 
literally why we do that. Look, look at that. Looks like something you find in a kid's diaper. You don't want that in your sauce. It's fair enough. So put that there. Now this is gonna go back on the heat. We gotta kinda add a few more things to this, which is what we're gonna do right now. So I'm just gonna cut real quick just so I can get all that together, all right? Alrighty, so now that we got the peppers all blended, we're gonna add a lot of butter to this. Four sticks, and that's gonna thicken this. It's definitely gonna thicken this. But it's also gonna offset the pure spice of the peppers. And while that's going as well, we're gonna add more paprika, about a tablespoon or so. Again, <laughs> not my recipe, this is pretty indulgent. And it's gonna be pretty spicy. So be prepared for that. And we're just gonna kind of emulsify all this together with the butter until it's ready to go. It's gonna be spicy, it's gonna be rich. It's gonna be, uh, obviously it's gonna be delicious. There's four sticks of butter in here, which still blows my mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to you when this is ready to go, but take a look at that, it's not even melting. Uh, we're also not adding much salt in this because again, we brine the chicken in a 10% salt solution and we've salted it right after. So, I mean, we're gonna kinda be kinder to our hearts. I don't think we need any more salt, I think that's plenty. Yeah, we'll come back when this is emulsified again. All right, the sauce has been made. It is spicy and very buttery. Now he just wants you to kind of spoon it over, which makes sense because this is extremely indulgent. I feel like, wow, we just waste our time here to do that. There we go. That's probably all you need. <laughs> Honestly, it's pretty, pretty wild stuff. Then he wants you to dust it with paprika. Because, you know, we need a little more. And cayenne, because we need more. Alrighty, and that's it. That's Maddie Matheson's uh, chicken. Nashville hot chicken. He says that you're supposed to serve this over some Texas toast with pickles, which we do have, but in hindsight, I just don't see the point because there's toast and bone in chicken. So we're gonna give it a try kind of like this. So we have our, I think this is a wing. Yeah, it's a wing. That's pretty good. It's delicious, even with the super buttery sauce. I was a little worried about the sauce because it's just so much butter. It's a pound of butter, like it's obscene. But with the chicken, because it has a salt brine, the butter actually kind of gives it a little bit of uh, grounding, like a little bit of balance. It's actually really good. I would not toss this in that butter sauce. Don't do that, because it's too much. But as is, kind of like a spooning, it's really good. This is Maddie Matheson's Nashville, Nashville, sorry, it's very spicy. Nashville chicken, hot chicken. It's very, very good. It's actually super easy to make if you have the time. It is time consuming. But the flavors and everything, they work and they work well. I mean, they should. I mean, he knows what he's doing. Give it a try. Tell us your experience with it. Give us a like, comment, share. Maybe Matt, Maddie will see it himself. Who knows? That'd be cool if he kind of reposted it. I'm the hungover chef. Thanks for coming by and uh, have a beer on me. Now we're gonna move on to the legs. <laughs> the legs.